Welcome to Satu Carry You Online Nursing Channel. The main goal of our nursing channel is to improve the students' nursing education and make them to prepare for giving the exam in a very better and efficient way. On this aspect, we decided to shoot a, a presentation video on anatomy and physiology question paper of previous uh, years. Uh, we have selected uh, the 2017 question paper and we discuss each questions and we are going to give idea how the students can write the uh, present write and present in the exam in a very effective manner so that they can able to get more marks in the upcoming exams so in this video we have selected the 2017 anatomy and physiology question paper of UHS Rotec and in this tutorial uh, the anatomy part we are going to see in that the first part of the uh, anatomy physiology question paper uh, which have four questions in that the first question is having three sub questions uh, we will see this three questions today blood supply of the heart types of muscle cranial nerves each question carries four mark the first two question carries four mark each the cranial nerve which carries six marks let's see how to present these question in the university exam first question is blood supply of the of the heart this question is also known, known as coronary circulation blood is supplied to the heart by its own vascular system called coronary circulation so in the exam you please draw this diagram and you label the part so that you will get uh, maximum mark uh, when you attempt this question blood supply is done by the heart to all parts of the body also it supply blood to its own part that is called uh, coronary circulation the iota which is the main blood supplier to the body and it branches off into two main coronary blood vessels which is called as arteries these coronary arteries branch off into two smaller arteries which supply oxygen rich blood to the entire heart muscles the coronary artery is uh, divided into right coronary artery and left coronary artery and it supplies blood to various part of the heart and its muscles the right coronary artery uh, has two branches right posterior descending artery and a large marginal branch left coronary artery also having two branches left anterior descending artery and the circumflex branch now what is the difference between right coronary artery and left coronary artery the right coronary artery is uh, smaller than the left coronary artery or you can say the left coronary artery is larger than the right coronary artery right coronary artery arises from anterior coronary sinus whereas the left coronary artery arises from the left posterior aortic sinus now see the area of distribution right coronary artery supply plus uh, supplies the blood to the following areas right atrium greater part of right ventricle small part of the left ventricle posterior part of the interventricular septum and whole conducting system of the heart except a part of left branch of atrioventricular bundle so these are the areas supplied by right coronary artery the left coronary artery supplies blood to the left atrium it's not the right atrium it's the left atrium greater part of left ventricle smaller part of right ventricle and anterior part of the interventricular septum also you supply blood to the left branch of atrioventricular bundle so this is the area of distribution of blood supply to the heart by coronary artery right as well as left next we see the venous drainage the venous supply to the heart is by three veins coronary sinus anterior cardiac vein and vena cardis minimae so these are the three veins which supply blood to the heart coronary sinus anterior cardiac vein and vena cardis minimae now the lymphatic drainage by two main nodes brachiocephalic node and tracheobranchial lymph node which uh, supplies lymph flow to the heart and its muscles now what is applied anatomy or it is also called as clinical anatomy whenever you study anatomy uh, you try to answer the question with clinical anatomy or applied anatomy this tells what are the various anomalies or abnormalities related to that particular part 
now we are studying uh, circulation of blood circulation to the heart so any impairment in the blood circulation of the heart leads to coronary artery disease which have two major problems like angina pectoris uh, which is also known as which is defined as severe chest pain behind the sternum due to ischemia of the heart cardiac muscles and myocardial infraction it is a necrosis of your part of the myocardium due to severe and prolonged ischemia due to narrowing of coronary arteries so this is the applied anatomy for blood circulation to the heart uh, this is how you need to present the first question now go to the second question types of muscles muscular system consists of three muscles uh, known as cardiac muscles smooth muscles skeletal muscles skeletal muscles uh, account for 40 to 50 percentage of our total body weight human body has more than 430 pairs of skeletal muscles now some of the basic things we need to know uh, there are 640 muscles in our body in that serratorius muscle which runs outside the hip down and down and across inside the knees was the longest muscle in the human body it is the longest muscle in the human body Stapedius muscle which is located in deep in the air it is the smallest muscle of our body the gluteus maximus where commonly we used to give im injection which is located in the buttocks is the strongest muscle and it is the uh, very powerful muscles also now we come to the topic first we uh, need to know the classification of muscles basically muscle is classified into voluntary muscles and involuntary muscle based on the movements like some muscles which we which is under our control like biceps and triceps are called as voluntary muscles heart muscles no one can control that is example of involuntary muscles now we see the another classification based on the stripes which is present in the muscle fibers if stripes are present that is called a striated muscles and uh, the example is skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles those muscles without stripes are called as non-striated muscle example is uh, bladder muscle also non-striated muscle is also known as smooth muscles so this is about muscle classification now you are seeing the diagram of the types of muscle cardiac muscle skeletal muscle and smooth muscle this diagram you draw in the exam which will give you more mark now move on to the next thing cardiac muscle these cardiac muscles are uh, what we can say it is an involuntary muscle and these muscles are branched and it have up and it looks like fused together to each other these muscles are look like attached to one another this muscle also has striations and uh, each cell of this muscle have central nuclei next is cardiac muscles are seen in the heart as per the name cardiac muscle contracts uh, and it pumps the blood throughout the body and this is responsible for the heartbeat also the muscle when this muscle contracts our heartbeat is produced healthy cardiac muscles will never fatigue but when we grow up the muscle starts to get fatigue because of the age skeletal muscles these muscle fibers are long and cylindrical they have many nuclei and it has striations and it is example of voluntary muscle and these muscles have another one specific feature of alternating dark and light bands are seen in this muscle comparing to all this muscle this muscle have one additional feature that this muscle having uh, alternating dark and light bands are present and skeletal muscles are uh, they are attached to the skeleton by tendons and it causes movement of our bones and joints these muscles get fatigue very easily when you do more exercise you get pain that is due to the fatigue of skeletal muscles smooth muscles these muscles uh, does not have any striations and a single nuclei is present and these muscle fibers are spindle shaped fibers and they contract very slowly they could not contract very fast like cardiac muscle they contract very slowly smooth muscle is also not under not under our control hence it is called as involuntary muscles now some of the functions of smooth muscles the muscle which is present in the urinary system 
and uh, it controls the urination those muscle which present in the respiratory system controls breathing muscles in the esophagus stomach and intestine controls digestion muscles in the circulatory system like lining of the blood vessel helps in the blood circulation so this is how you can answer the types of muscle in the university exam now the third question of today's lecture cranial nerve cranial nerve is one of the important question which is frequently asked in all the university exams of various university uh, cranial nerve you know these are the nerves uh, arise from the brain and these nerves apply to uh, all part of the body and cranial nerves there are 12 pair of cranial nerves uh, in that first two nerves olfactory and optic nerve arise from the cerebrum whereas the other nerves cranial nerve 3 to 12 comes from the brain stem the cranial nerves are represented with roman numerals and we write like 1 to 12 for each cranial nerve and the functions are related to their name let's see one by one there are 12 pairs 12 pairs of cranial nerve olfactory nerve optic nerve oculomotor trochlear trigeminal abduction facial vestibulocochlear glossopharyngeal vagus accessory hypoglossal these are the 12 pairs of cranial nerve now let's see one by one in detail olfactory nerve it is the first cranial nerve the function is sensory and it is responsible for smell sense of smell any damage to this nerve will affect the smell functions okay we cannot smell properly the second cranial nerve is optic nerve it is also sensory uh, function and it responsible for providing vision any damage to this nerve causes blindness in the visual field the third nerve is oculomotor nerve it has somatic as well as autonomic motor function it is responsible for our eye movement opening of eyelid constriction of people visual accommodation including focusing any damage to this oculomotor nerve leads to dropping eye lid dilated people inability to move eye in certain directions next trochlear nerve it is pure motor function nerve and uh, it is responsible for eye movement and particularly the superior oblique muscles are moved with the help of innervation from trochlear nerve any damage to this nerve causes double vision which is called diplobia the fifth cranial nerve is trigeminal nerve it has three branches ophthalmic branch maxillary branch mandibular branch ophthalmic branch uh, related to our eye ball sensation from nasal cavity skin of forehead upper eyelid eyebrow and nose maxillary branches responsible for sensation from lower eyelid upper lips gums teeth of maxilla cheek nose palate and pharynx whereas the mandibular branches is responsible for sensation from teeth of the mandibles lower gums lips and tongue any damage to this nerve cause loss of sensation and chewing function is impaired the sixth cranial nerve is abduction nerve this is a motor function nerve and it provides eye movement uh, and any damage to this nerve results in inability to rotate our eyes properly either in lateral side or in medial side seventh cranial nerve is facial nerve it uh, dual function it has dual function sensory and motor facial expression is one of the main responsible uh, uh, done by the facial nerve we we keep different reactions to different uh, situation so that is controlled by the facial nerve taste also a part of the uh, function of the facial nerve uh, it supplies to the anterior two-third of the tongue and uh, damage to this nerve results in sagging facial expressions and disturb sense of taste so what do you mean by sagging facial it is like dumping face eighth cranial nerve is vestibulocochlear it does the it does the sensory function 
it is responsible for hearing and sense of balance damage causes damage to this nerve causes deafness dizziness nausea and loss of balance the ninth cranial nerve is glossopharyngeal this nerve do motor as well as sensory function it helps in swallowing voice production via pharyngeal muscles salivation is controlled by glossopharyngeal nerve also it uh, responsible for regulation of bp and respiration gag reflex is under the under the control of glossopharyngeal nerve sensation from baro and chemo receptors are done through glossopharyngeal nerve you know what is baro receptor and chemo receptor which you have studied in the bp regulation the next is any damage to this nerve leads to loss of bitter and sour taste and uh, also impairment of swallowing and uh, bp anomalies the 10th cranial nerve is vagus it also dual has dual function motor as well as sensory sensation from the skin at back of ear larynx trachea and esophagus sensation also obtained from baroreceptor and chemoreceptor also responsible for swallowing and voice production relaxation of airway decrease heart rate damage causes loss of voice hoarseness impaired swallowing uh there is also gi dis dis dysfunction and blood pressure abnormalities any damage leads to these problems the 11th cranial nerve is accessory nerve it is pure motor function nerve swallowing head movement neck and shoulder movement are controlled by accessory nerve any damage will leads to impairment in the movement of head neck and shoulder movement and the last cranial nerve is Uh, hypoglossal nerve motor function tongue movements for speech and this nerve is also responsible for uh, swallowing and this uh, nerve impairment causes tongue protrusion so this is all about 12 pass of cranial nerve the, we came to the end of this lecture hope you understood and you can able to write in the exams if these questions are coming in a very effective manner uh in the next video we will discuss the second question which have three sub questions like stomach pituitary gland and also the breast so now thanks for watching my video and keep subscribing my youtube channel sat to carry online nursing channel and keep on liking sharing and commenting on my channel thank you